What was the hour of joy? At the end of the game, once we get Catnap killed by the prototype, we finally plug the large battery into its respective socket and meet up with Poppy after turning on the gas production zone. And she begins to praise us for all that we've done and presents a tape to us that they liked to call the hour of joy. And just from what was shown on the tape, we can guess that this was the moment where all of the toys decided to rebel against all of the staff and scientists for experimenting on them. But what actually was the hour of joy? What caused it? And how has it affected the story of Poppy Playtime altogether? Well, by the end of this video, everything will make perfect sense. The hour of joy was a major event that occurred at the Playtime Co. factory on August 8th, 1995. This tragic incident was caused by the Bigger Bodies Initiative, which was the trigger that led to Playtime Co.'s orphan slash employee experiments and eventual downfall, and it would set in motion the events of Poppy Playtime. The Hour of Joy was planned and orchestrated by the prototype, who wanted bitter revenge on Playtime Co. because of the experiments, and it resulted in every single human being in the factory being brutally murdered. And afterwards, the corpses were brought down to the deepest depths of Playtime Co. to be eaten. Now, that's the simplified version, but what really happened on that tape? Well, at exactly 10.45 a.m., Kissy Missy was being relocated to Playcare via a train. 15 minutes later, exactly at 11 a.m., the prototype and his allies initiated a massive rebellion against the employees. In the tape shown by Poppy, Huggy Wuggy is first seen ambushing and attacking employees in the main lobby and presumably off screen, killing the scientists a bit after. Next, Mommy Longlegs is shown killing people at the game station by lifting them up and dropping them from a lethal height. Another employee at water treatment is seen being swarmed and possibly devoured by a mob of many smiling critters and many huggies. The scene then cuts to a hallway in the school where Miss Delight and her sisters chase a man into one of the classrooms before showing Kissy Missy knocking out the employees that were transporting her. Boxy Boo is then shown in a hallway tearing apart an employee before catnap is shown in play care, seemingly looking for survivors while throwing a body onto the steps of the counselor's office. And the final part of the tape shows various locations from the first three chapters, including Make a Friend, the Game Station, Play Care, and the Catwalk leading to Poppy's room, all filled with bodies. Although an emergency alert notice was sent out to warn the workforce, nearly everyone within the facility, both guilty and innocent, was slaughtered by the the toys in the factory and for some reason you can also hear the event in the dream that we have after catnap attacks us in the counselor's office which honestly leads me to believe that the main character that we're playing as isn't who we think he is and if you guys want me to make a theory on that let me know down in the comments anyways the remaining survivors including leith pierre were forced to hide while attempting to escape and their fates are unknown the sudden disappearance of all the employees led to the closure of Playtime Co., though it remains unclear if any investigation was ever launched. The toys later refer to this rebellion as the Hour of Joy, with the monsters remaining in their previous locations. And again, the corpses of all that were killed were then brought to the deepest parts of the facility to be consumed by the toys as a form of food. Eventually, this food source either dwindled or was cut off, leading to various toys turning on each other to stay alive before the players return into 2005. Now, with everything laid out, there are some questions that need to be answered. Like, how did the prototype even manage to orchestrate this event to where all of the toys were not only on board with everything, but they were able to communicate back and forth with him? It's been said that the prototype was monitored at all times, and this was due to the fact that he was a prime vessel for what they were trying to create. However, the attributes that the scientists managed to get out of the prototype severely backfired as he managed to briefly disable the camera that was meant to monitor him by repurposing the parts of the alarm clock in his room. And once the camera was turned back on, they noticed that the room was supposedly empty. And after one of the scientists checked it out, it turns out that the prototype was hiding in one of the camera's blind spots. 
But he took this opportunity to try and run past the scientist and escape through the open door. However, a scientist outside the room managed to close the door via a remote, resulting in the prototype killing the scientist that was still in the room. But why is this information important? Well, while listening to the final log tape from chapter 1, we hear that the prototype managed to escape and go missing, and shortly after, the hour of joy began. Now, along with his unparalleled intelligence, the prototype also has the ability to replicate any voice that he hears, as during his conversation with Harley Sawyer, multiple voices are heard when he speaks. And to be honest, we might have heard this ability throughout the entirety of chapter 3. And if you want to hear about that theory, the link is in the description. But it's entirely possible that the prototype utilized this ability to trick the scientists into allowing him to escape, as well as to manipulate the orphans of Playtime Co. More specifically, Theodore Grambell. Theodore Grambell was an orphan who was turned into catnap due to his connections with the prototype. And again, if you guys want me to make a theory on catnap's origin story, let me know down in the comments. But this connection that Theodore had must have been after the prototype escaped, as Theodore drew a picture of what seemed to be the prototype under his bed. So, with that being said, it's possible that the prototype was able to sneakily navigate through playcare and let the toys know of his plans with some being on board and some not. However, it seemed like all of the toys were at least on board with the killing of the employees, but further plans were a bit different in terms of their willingness to play along with them. And Kissy Missy is a perfect example, as you can see her breaking out of her restraints and attacking the scientists. However, it's unclear if her attack actually killed the scientists, as it's possible that another toy came by to finish the job. And this would honestly make sense if you think about how Kissy Missy is regarding her personality and caring nature. She's willing to attack the scientists to stop them from experimenting on her, but nothing more. And this is probably why she's seen as an ally throughout chapter 2 and 3. You can even put Dog Day in this category, even though we don't really see him in the Hour of Joy. Even though there aren't any dates to when Catnap and the prototype tortured Dog Day, the only logical time would be a little bit after the Hour of Joy, as it would make zero sense for them to be able to torture Dog Day while the staff were still around. So with that being said, it's likely that Dog Day was initially on board with the Hour of Joy itself just so the experiments would stop. But once he realized that it was going to start to go beyond that and start to steer towards a more sinister way of doing things, that's when he decided to stop, which led to the torturing. However, we do know that in order for the experiments to survive, they do have to eat. And again, it's said that at the very end of the Hour of Joy, all of the corpses were dragged down to a location where they would never be found to be eaten. And keep in mind, that all happened 10 years before we came back to Playtime Co. So the toys that are still alive must be starving at this point. And the only way they would have been able to survive is by eating each other. This is probably why we see so many dead toys throughout the factory. And the ones who did this are likely the toys who were part of the Bigger Bodies initiative, like Huggy Wuggy, Mommy Longlegs, Catnap, and even even the smiling critters. But overall, it seems like the hour of joy was the equivalent of one huge jailbreak, with one prisoner being the leader and orchestrator of everything. And I guess you could say that all of the prisoners killed and ate all of the security guards. As weird as that sounds, it's a bit easier when you think about it this way though, because I'm sure most prisoners would want to escape jail, but not all of them would want to go about it in the most violent way possible. And for the people that do, they have no problem disposing of the heretics but what do you guys think the hour of joy was all about let me know down in the comments thanks for watching subscribe and click on this video right here